So we are now going to discuss types of thermal expansion. Okay. So basically, there are three types of thermal expansion. One is the linear expansion. Another is the superficial expansion. And the third one is the cubical expansion, which we can also say as volumetric expansion. Okay, so there are three kinds of this. So in linear expansion, what happens is that there is expansion in the length. In superficial expansion, there is expansion in area. And in volumetric expansion, there is expansion in volume. So it goes like this. Okay. So first we will discuss, we'll start with linear expansion. Right. So let us consider a rod or a wire. So this rod has a length L, initial length. Or you can say L naught, which is a length L naught. Okay, so now what we are doing is we are changing its temperature from T1 to T2. So its initial temperature, its initial temperature is T1, and we are increasing this temperature, and its final temperature is T2. Okay, so its initial length is L naught, and its final length will be. L naught plus change in the length that is delta L. Okay, okay. So, so it is found that right. It is found experimentally. It is found that this delta L, the change in length, is directly proportional to initial length, and this is directly proportional to the change in temperature. Okay, the change in temperature here is how much? It's T two minus T one, the delta T. So this is found. This is experimental result. So from here we can say delta L is proportional to L not delta T. Okay. Okay. So this proportional sign, this is a sign of this is a proportionality sign. So this will be removed by a coefficient that is called as alpha. These two are different. Okay. This is a sign of proportionality and that is alpha. So you can understand this is different and this is different. This is alpha. Okay. So Alpha L naught delta T. What is this alpha? This alpha is called as the coefficient of linear expansion. Okay, this is a constant for a given material. It will be constant. Okay, so this is alpha. Alpha is the coefficient of linear expansion. Is it understood? Okay, so we can see this from here. What will be the final length? So the final length, just like you have seen here, we wrote here, it is L naught plus delta L. This final length will become L naught plus this delta L you can put here. So that is alpha L naught delta T. This is when you can take L naught common, it becomes one plus alpha delta T. Okay. So please note down everyone till this point. So now. Let us discuss the superficial expansion. So, what is superficial expansion? So, we are going to now discuss superficial expansion. So, let us consider a plate. The area of the plate. Now, this is the length and this is the breadth. So, its initial temperature is T1, its final temperature is T2. So, you are heating it, you are providing it heat. Change in temperature is T2 minus T1. Okay. So, when you heat it, there will be change in its breadth, there will be change in its There will be overall change in its area. So, what is this? This is the change in breadth, and this is the change in length. 
Now, what will be the change in area that we need to change? So, its initial area is L into B, that is A naught, and its final area will be over here. Its final area will be the final length into final breadth. That means it will be L into 1 plus alpha delta P. Okay. Right. This is the final length. This is the B into 1 plus alpha delta T. Okay. So if you multiply this, what will you get? You will get L, B, and in the bracket you will get 1 plus alpha square t square actually what you can say is <clears throat> you can write this as 1 plus alpha t ka whole square you can write it as okay now now this is a naught so a f is equal to this will be a naught and generally Generally means always is alpha is cos naught, cos naught less than one. Okay. So you can use this formula 1 plus x raised to n is equal to 1 plus nx, which you have learned in the variable expansion that you can use this to become 1 plus 2 alpha delta t. So you become 1 plus 2 alpha delta t. This is the final area here. And uh, this 2 alpha is called as beta that is called as a coefficient of superficial expansion so what is the final area final area is a naught into 1 plus beta delta t where beta is equal to twice of alpha all right so this is you know, just like we had this l final is equal to l naught into 1 plus alpha delta t here we have a, a naught into 1 plus beta delta t. Okay, this is the final area here. So, what is the change in area? So, you can see the change in area here. This a final is equal to a naught plus a naught beta delta t. So, if you bring it here, you will get the change in area. So, a final minus a naught that is delta a is equal to a naught beta delta. We can see this is similar to what we got in the length. That change in length is equal to L naught alpha delta t. Similarly, we have A naught beta delta t. Alright. So all of you please note down till this point. So here beta is the coefficient of superficial expansion. Alright. So now we will discuss the cubical expansion. So in cubical expansion, let us consider a cuboid. This is length, breadth, and height. So its initial temperature here is T initial is T1, T final is T2. So again the change in temperature is T2 minus T1. Initial volume is LBH, and since there will be change in the length, breadth, and height, final will be L into 1 plus alpha delta T. This is the final length. So, this is final length, final breadth, into final height. Okay, and this into again B into 1 plus alpha delta T is the new breadth, and new height is H into 1 plus alpha. So from here you can say the final is so this is LBH you can take this length breadth and height here and this will become one plus alpha delta t whole cube. So this is the initial volume. So V final is equal to V naught and this will become one plus three alpha delta t. Why? Because uh, alpha is cos naught less less than one, which is of the form one plus x x to will become 1 plus 3x as we have learned in variable expansion. So here this 3 alpha is called as gamma. So 
this will become d prime root which is equal to d naught into one plus gamma delta t. So what is this gamma? This is the coefficient of cubical expansion, and gamma is equal to three prime root. Got it? Okay. So this is the coefficient of cubical expansion. Please note down. We have discussed all the three: the linear expansion, superficial expansion, and the cubical expansion. And you have, you can also see the relation between alpha, beta, and gamma. Beta is two alpha, gamma is three prime. So that's what the ratio one is to two is to three. Okay, we'll discuss more about it later. So please note down the rules. Okay, so now we'll discuss the variation in density of the substance with temperature. Okay, so Let's do our next topic. That is variation in density. Variation in density of a solid. So all of us we know that you know density is mass by volume. So when there is a volume expansion. And this expansion is going on for the sake of finding volume. So whenever there is a change in volume, there will also be a change in the density. Okay. So when we change the density by delta t, there is also a change in the density. So the initial density is this, right? What about the final density? The final density will be mass by final volume. Okay. Now what is the final volume here? Final volume here is the final volume here is initial volume that is d naught into one plus gamma delta t. Right? Okay. So the final density will be mass divided by d naught. Now what? Now we will approximate here. You know, if gamma is quite less than one, so what we will do is we will take this term up. So this will become one plus gamma delta t raised to minus one, and we'll approximate this. This will become one by v naught into one minus gamma delta t. One plus x. Okay. So from here we will get rho final is equal to this will become rho naught. So this is rho naught into one minus gamma delta t. Now we should know one thing that this formula is not valid for. This formula is not valid for gases and liquid. Gases and liquid. Liquid having high value of gamma. Okay, having high value of gamma because for that this will become this term will become negative. So this is not applicable for that. All right. Okay. So this formula or this approximation which we have done here is valid only for the gases. So let me please note down this. Okay. So this much for today. All right. And uh, tomorrow we'll discuss, or in the next lecture we'll discuss. You know, so different examples in which we will see the expansion, thermal expansion. All right. So this is this much for today.